Welcome back to game number two between Hamburg Asasu and Kangpei Style. This time around, the two players have switched around their races and changed locations as Kangpei Style is now on the top left corner of the map, where Sasu is now located on the middle left spot, and he's playing the Purple Zerg up against the Red Terran that's now occupied by Kangpei Style. And in the last game, Kangpei Style was the Zerg, he pulled out a really unfortunate strategy that I don't think could have ever worked against a player of Sasu's caliber and Sasu really quickly shut it down showed Kangpei that yo dude this shit doesn't work don't try it just don't right just don't and so now we'll see whether Sasu learned something from his own lesson he's already sending his drone out to his choke right at the start so he's going for a very conventional choke build Though I don't really like the position of the hatchery there. I usually prefer to place it a little bit closer here. There, it makes it easier to shut off the entrance. Because that's going to leave a lot of sunken to shut this entire area off. But maybe he knows that he's playing T, uh, Terran vs. Zerg. So the location in Terran vs. Zerg doesn't really matter all that much. It's mostly the position is really important for Protoss against Zerg. As a Zerg player, you don't want those elves to come walking through. And a Terran can't exactly just walk through. Marines die very, very quickly to sunken attacks. Whereas Zealots are just too beefy, too tanky. They just walk right through. The first couple of Zealots will most likely die, but if you've got like 10 or something, you're just gonna walk through. Even if you've got 5 or 10 seconds out there, they're just gonna walk through and harass your mineral line. But that's not the case because it's Terran versus Zerg. Starts off with the pool pretty early. Followed by a second hatchery, and there's the gas. It's a very, 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 very early gas out there. He's only on seven drones, he's already throwing his gas down. Now he's in eight drones in total. He's making a ninth drone, so he's going for six circlings. I assume once his hatchery there finishes, he's gonna make six circlings. Six circlings, maybe. I don't really see any reason why he would be saving up so many larvae. Well, he's going for. Two drones, alright, that's not something I expected, there was no real reason to delay the drones for that long, but he gets more drones on there, three, drone, three drones on his gas, he's going for a very fast lair, or maybe for a circling speed, he's going for the circling build, not too sure what he's going, what this is on about, but Kangpei does the very standard build, three barracks, gas, and academy depots of course, because you need those if you want to produce units. Alright, so let's see what he's going to do. He goes for the lair. It's a very early lair. And he's going for just a single sunken at his choke. So he's going to rely on those serpents here to kind of harass and bother him. Whether that's going to work out or not is the question. Because circles get cut out, the single circling gets through. He's going to ignore that single circling. He's going to just keep that circling running back and forth. Circling gets cut out by some marines. He gets a little bit of vision off Kangpei's base. Kangpei. A little bit slow on his reaction in trying to shut that Zergling down. Zergling gets himself a lot of information. The second Sunken Colony has been thrown down at the choke, but the Marines and the um, SVs come streaming in, attack this single Sunken that's out there. The uh, SVs just gonna help him out. The Marines don't have Stim upgrade just yet. The, uh, he doesn't get. He should have just tried to take the Sunken down. The Sunken has 9 HP left, could have, could have prevented himself some damage, but the second Sunken finishes morphing and he's got his wall up. Marines get pulled back, SVs get pulled back, SVs get put back on his minerals. His minerals are gonna need that a little bit because that is hurting his economy just a little bit. Taking those three SVs off the minerals. Amogasazu in the meantime has 15 drones now mining minerals. He's going for the very fast spire, so we're gonna be expecting some build as micro. Unless Kangpei decides to throw out a second wave of attack because he's got stim upgrade on the way in his medics in production and his barracks. Once he groups those up, he can take down this choke very quickly because there's a sunken there that's a very low HP, he only takes a couple of shots and it goes down. And he can walk right in. And the spire is only halfway done. I honestly don't see Hamburg Asasu holding this one. This Maddox have got to be a godsend gift for Kang Pei once he goes in. And these sunkens, these, these two sunkens will be up for a little while longer, but this middle one is gonna go down instantly, he targets it, fires it down, it goes down, he targets the other two, Zergans come streaming and Zergans gonna do some damage on the Marines, but the Marines taking down these Zergans and the Zergans without much effort, the medics healing really, really, really hard, and he's gonna just focus down the remaining Sunken Scream Colonies, the Hatchery's gonna just blindly fire, and Sasu 
just being too arrogant or maybe he's trying to cut too many corners and he leaves within just five minutes of game time. Sasu, 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 I did not expect you to cut so many corners and play it so safe, so unsafe that you will lose the game within five minutes. Jeez, boy. That's a bummer. So because this game is so short, I'm gonna pause the recording real quick and immediately go into game number three. Just to keep in mind, the score is now 2-2. Both players won as Terran against Zerg. Zerg lost both times. Mostly because both players just did shit that didn't work and will never work. Like, cutting corners on your choke like that. I can understand the thought process because you're kind of gambling on your opponent not attacking. And you're gambling on getting your Spire up in time and then you're gonna mute, mute this micro. But if you never get to the point, why even cut corners? Come on, don't cut corners. Never cut corners. Cutting corners like this... Yeah, that's gonna backfire. Right, so now we're gonna pause it real quick, load up game number 3, and I'll see you in... It's about 15 seconds for me, but a single second for you. Alright, game number 3 between Hamburger Sasu and Kanpei style is loading up, and we're getting into the game. Both players are now on Zerk and Protoss, and this time it's Hamburg Sasu on the Protoss. One of his, well actually he's about equally good in all races, but he just cuts too many corners on Zerk. Tries things that are just too wacky on Zerk, and yeah, he kind of just does weird shit on Zerk that sometimes works because the enemy isn't expecting it, and he can pull off an, uh, something amazing with his micro. But most of the time, well, if the enemy doesn't make a mistake, his Zerg strategies are just so wacky against Terran that they don't even end up working because they're too wacky to even work. So let's hope this game turns out a little bit differently from the last two games where both the Zerg players in the last two games, they both fucked up pretty hard. I don't want to see him fuck up again. It's not nice to see a Zerg fuck up because it just makes Zerg look so bad on this map even though it is kind of bad compared to the other two races, like Terran has an edge, Protoss has an edge, but it's nowhere near as bad as these two players just made Zerg look in the last two games. And um, I fear that it might be a repeat of the last two games because he's starting off with a single hatchery, and I rarely see that work against players of Sasu's level because Hamburger Sasu is just so solid on Protoss, there's so many different ways he knows and can pull off to just abuse you and kill you really quickly, efficiently and effectively that I don't see the nunchoke zerg working against someone like him. So there's the spawning pool and he is actually he's going for a choke, alright? So he's just mixing things up instead of going for a nunchoke build, but this is very risky. But because Sasu is all the way across the map, it might work, but only because it's a gamble, and not so much because it's a very smart strategy. Once again, it's like what I mentioned in the last game, trying to cut corners maybe? Not too sure about it, but it feels like trying to cut corners where you shouldn't be cutting corners, because he's already sending a drone out to scout, alright, I understand the thought process there, but I don't understand the thought process of this very late choke. So you're going to have defense up so very late into the game. And Sasu already has a Zealous out in production. Hatchery is halfway done. He's got Zerglings coming out now, so Zerglings will be able to buy him some time and keep Sasu distracted from trying to attack that choke there. So it might work in this sense. But had Sasu been like right next to him and had gone for a little bit more aggressive build for the early game, even though a 3 gateway build is already quite aggressive by Korean standards, this very late choke could have just backfired against him really, really badly. Or he has a drone out that's choke. He'll have to make that first creep call in the second. He's got a lot of hatcheries out already. So that is the upside of trying to cut corners. Where you might assume you shouldn't be cutting corners. But he finds himself a little bit ahead of where he should normally be if he had gone for a regular choke. But the drone count is still quite low. Zerkling is now going for the offensive move, trying to harass, but cannon finishes, and the zealots zone off the Zerklings, being I mean, rendering them unable from getting a good surround up on that cannon. So the strategies end up working. 
these two zealots are gonna come walking in and they will walk in right around the same time that this one sunken finishes and he goes for the two drones, kills the drones that's a little bit of a setback for Kangpe because now he has to pull off two more drones to plug up this hole he's got here inside his choke, a single zealot goes down, a second zealot is gonna be cut out by these zerglings that's another downside of this strategy because now it means that Kangpe had to produce more zerglings in order to defend himself against those two zealots which is not the, how do you call it, ideal situation? Zasu already going for air weapons? I think Zasu is going for one of his very famous and unique scout builds. Or he's going... F yeah, I'm not quite sure what he's going, but he has a build where he goes for very fast mass scouts. And he basically micros you to death. And then adds in reavers, a reaver drop. It's a really fun strategy to watch because the, the, the scout micro is just so amazing and on a completely different level from what you have ever seen in your life. But whether he's going for the strategy or not, I'm not too sure. He's got the components on the way, but he's mixing it up with a Citadel of Doom. But he needs a Citadel of Doom for a fleet beacon with which he can go for scout speed. He's going for a Corsair, so he, we might have to rule out the scout micro option. Right, so um, the Hydro Lizard then is finished for Kangpei style. He's got his choke, he's now plugged up, he's got a lot of Zerglings there that cost him a lot of material, uh, a lot of minerals that could have been turned into drones. So, he, while he does need those to defend himself, he could have gone for an, a different choke build to plug up this hole and deny these Zealots from going in on the Sunkens and have pretty much defended himself with less of an investment which wouldn't even be cut in corners, it would just be a smarter way of doing it and I'm uh, really against cutting corners on fastest map because cutting corners on fastest map, even on low map will always cost you there are some cor corners you can try to cut but only in response to the opponent doing the exact right moves in the exact right circumstances being there but then it wouldn't be cutting corners. In that case, it would be taking advantage of your enemy. So yeah, don't cut corners. Alright, so he's going for the Reaver push. It has to be, because there's no other reason why you would put your robotic facilities out right outside of the enemy choke. It has to be a Reaver push that he's going to throw down. The support, robotic support bay is now being produced. He's got Zealot Speed almost finished. He's got Weapon Upgrades for his air almost finished. He's still making Corsairs. He's just going to use those Corsairs to abuse and abuse some of these Overlords and deny Kangpei style vision over these hills basically to limit his reaction time and his vision of whatever is coming into his base which is more or less a standard move but it's sometimes an essential move because whenever the Zerg can see your stuff, your shuttles flying in over the map it gives him so much time to respond and react and set up a counter move to the shuttles flying in such as repositioning the Hydralisks and sniping the shuttles this way, it's way harder for the Zerg to play into it, because the shuttle is already in your base by the time that you notice it. Which really hurts when it goes wrong. Well, Sasu is, unlike Kangpei, not cutting any corners anywhere, just playing a very efficient playstyle. There's the robotic support bay, he's got shuttle speed... No, he's got... He's got shuttle speed on the way, and he's got upgrade scarab damage on the way as well. Oh, he made a bunch of robotic support base. All right, so he's yeah, that's really unorthodox to go for three robotic support base at the same time and get all the the reaver upgrades at the same time. It's very costly, but there is a pretty good thought process behind it. I'm sure. Is instead of having to wait for shuttle speed or for scarab damage, you get both at the same time. You can abuse both at the same time and put them use against the enemy. But I do feel that it's a lot of a very high gas investment so early into the game. So he's got an observatory on the way, so he knows that Lurkus might be an option for Kangpei's style. He's now he's throwing out his more forges, ready to get himself all the upgrades he needs for his ground. And he's now he's microing his reavers to attack the, the Sunka there. Will they micro them? To defend against the Zerglings, there, yeah, probably to the, deny those Zerglings from damaging him. 
Just threw down a bunch of panels on the middle for his mid build that he's going to use a little bit later on. Instead of building his gateways in his base, he builds them on the middle. Which, again, the same idea as these robotics facilities, reduces the distance to your enemy. Alright, so now he's got the upgraded Scarab damage, which will absolutely demolish these Hydralisks. And Kangpei decides to pull back because he's all the Zealots streaming in. Reaver's just very slowly pushing the front. Reaver is going to get more Reavers on this next wave. There's a lot of Reavers in production. There's got six robotic facilities on the middle. So every single wave of production, six Reavers will be added to his already existing Reavers. And now he's preparing a drop. So Zealots, a single Reaver, is going to fly in from the side. While he is attacking on the front and forcing all of these Hydralists to move to the front. Because he's going to send those, high, those Zealots in, force the Hydralists to move out. And he's going to send a drop in. Yes, he's sending a drop in. Zealots are attacking. Hydralists are microing backwards. Zealots are just there as a distraction. Drop comes flying in. Reaver, uh, Zealots gonna drop first as a distraction to take focus away from the Reaver. Reaver gets a shot off. Reaver kills all the drones. Only 12 drones left for Kangpei. Kangpei. This is a really bad position, although he does hold the frontal attack. Although he just only helped the Zealots. Reaver goes down. Zealots have died in the front, but there are so many Reavers in the front now that he can just very peacefully and happily push these Reavers in, kill those Sunkins in the choke. Hydralis will not be able to fight back against this because Hydralis will just get shot down in, in, in droves. Like, just a single Scarab shot with Scarab upgrade damage kills a lot of them. So this is pretty much the end of the game. I don't see Kangpei making a comeback. He sends his Hylodis out in a last final desperate attempt to stop push from Humber Kassas. But Humber Kassas just happily rolls in, kills all the Hylodis. How will Hylodis go down? A single Hylodis manages to escape back to the base. But it is game over for Kangpei. He's made a couple of Mutalists. But there are Corsairs out for Humber Kassas. He just has to pull those Corsairs over and kill these Mutalists. And even if these Mutalists don't die, there are so many Zealots, so many Reavers, that it's going to take ages for just these three Mutalists to kill all those ground forces. A couple of Hylists have been spawned, a couple of drones are back on the middle, so he made 10 packs for drones there. And he has to pull the drones away to the gas, because the Reavers are now threatening the minerals. The Reavers get a good couple shots out of everything that they're, that's in their path, and he's just going to blindly fire on the drones, and then going to take down the Hive too. The Hive is already... Lair is already down at half HP, and Kangpei calls GG, leaves the game, and the second game goes to Hamburg Asasu, PVC win. I already felt it coming when the game started, specifically because I was not liking Kangpei's style of play, and Sasu just with a very crisp, clean win. Does everything according to what a test book tells you to do, and just very good execution. Yeah, thanks for watching this third game. I'm gonna do game number four right now, right after this one. The score is now two wins for Hamburg Assassin, a single one for Kanpei. Hamburg Assassin is leading the series, and now we're going into game number four.